So let's talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is important for healthy immune function. It is found in fatty fish like salmon, fortified foods such as dairy products, some dairy products, orange juice, soy milk, almond milk, coconut milk, morning cereals, or just a few examples, uh, beef uh, liver and internal organs, cheese, egg yolks, and mushroom. And there are two major types of vitamin D, D2 and D3. Um, the form that our body synthesizes uh, from exposure to sun, for example, is vitamin D3. Uh, there are several foods and supplements you can find that will have uh, vitamin, um, uh, the different types of vitamin, but a lot of supplements today also offer vitamin D3. And in general, we want to consume a diverse, have a diverse uh, diet. And so when you're looking at consumption of foods, um, for example, mushrooms will have vitamin D2 form, uh, but it really doesn't matter that much because either ones will be working well for our body. Now, studies show conflicting results, but there is a probable association between deficiency of vitamin D and an increased risk of multiple sclerosis, autoimmune conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, hypertension, cardiovascular heart disease, and several types of cancer. This is a diagram of the metabolism of vitamin D. And you can see starting from the top, uh, the top left side, that's where we're going to start all our way down. And you can see that's exposure to UV light. Remember that vitamin D is a steroid hormone, mostly synthesized from the conversion of 7-dehydrocholesterol to pre-vitamin D3 through exposure to ultraviolet light. And that happens in the keratinocytes uh, in our skin. Now, vitamin D3 is then converted into 25-hydroxycalciferol, uh, calcif or we can refer to it as a 25-OHD3 in the liver. That happens by through the enzyme 25-hydroxylase. Hydro and finally, in the paroxysmal tubule of the kidney, the enzyme 25-hydroxyvitamin D1-hydroxylase converts it into the active form, which is 1.25 dehydrocalciferol. Vitamin D, as you can see on the right side, there's, there are on the top right side, there are different foods that we just mentioned, uh, such as eggs, cheese, fish, meat, that has our good sources of vitamin D. And they're absorbed, vitamin D is absorbed in the intestine. And it's also in, in really important for absorption of calcium and maintaining calcium homeostasis, which is really important in order for us to maintain healthy bone mass. Low level of vitamin of, of 25 hydroxyvitamin D, uh, the principal circulating storage form of vitamin D are present in about 30 to 50% otherwise healthy middle-aged to elderly adults. Vitamin D deficiency, deficiency is uh, defined as serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D levels below 75. Factors that might contribute to vitamin D deficiency are dietary, for example, uh, individuals who are living on fast food, processed food, uh, individuals that do not consume sufficient amount of, of uh, food that has uh, vitamin D, Inadequate sunlight, ex sunlight exposure. So many studies report that even just 15 minutes of direct exposure to the sun every day, uh, arms, legs, face, uh, will significantly increase the levels of vitamin D. Some studies even claim that sunlight is actually the best source of vitamin D. Malabsorption, uh, unfortunately, with that happens with certain conditions, for example, Crohn's, colitis, col uh, Crohn's colitis uh, um, inflammatory bowel disorders. Uh, that could be also with individuals, patients, uh, uh, older patients. Unfortunately, as we age, absorption of nutrients reduce. Gastro gastro uh, gastroesophagectomy, small bowel disease, pancreatic insufficiency. Loss of vitamin D binding protein uh, in 
for example, in patients with nephrotic syndrome. Effective 25-hydroxylation, uh, that happens with patients with liver disease uh, or liver failure, alcoholic cirrhosis, uh, anticonvulsants. Uh, remember that when we, I showed you that, that uh, flow, that graph on uh, that visual metabolize and how vitamin D is metabolized, remember that the liver and the kidney both play an important role in the metabolisms of, of uh, vitamin D. So vitamin D from foods, it's important to make sure that also the gut function as well uh, in order to properly absorb, metabolize, and all of that. So patients that have problems with liver function uh, or kidney function, they might have issues with vitamin D deficiency. And then defective the 1-alpha-25-hydroxylation, again, in patients that have kidney, uh, chronic kidney disease or failure, majority of the patient that majority of the patients will have just inadequate sunlight exposure because we're all work a lot of our a lot of us are working indoor and uh, or dietary insufficiency so vitamin d is an important immunoregulating effect it su it suppresses inflammation by down regulation of uh, the expression of nuclear factor kappa b activity and decreasing production levels of interleukin 6 interleukin 12 interferon uh, gamma and and tumor necrosis factor alpha. So all of so these are inflammatory cytokines that also cause over the long term through chronic inflammation it, it can cause damage to our own cells. It increases anti-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 10. Remember that interleukin 10 and Tregs are really important to modulate our immune system for reduction of inflammation inhibiting inflammatory pathways. And then several studies report that vitamin D deficiency is associated with multiple and chronic inflammatory diseases. Uh, you can see in, this, uh, uh, in this, this graph, vitamin D deficiency is associated with metabolic syndrome, glucose intolerance, obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and coronary artery diseases. So a few general recommendations. In 2006, there was a survey that uh, found that the prevalence rate of vitamin D deficiency among the U.S. was the highest in African Americans, about 82.1%, followed by Hispanics, about 69.2%. Vitamin D was reported to be lower in patients that are obese with a poor health status, patients with hypertension, patients with low, high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels, high, high LDL, and or patients that were not consuming milk daily. Uh, a thousand to two thousand units might be needed to obtain optimal levels on bone and immunity. And the effect of vitamin D supplements is small and might take some time. And remember that when you're working with patients with chronic inflammation, autoimmunity, typically when you recommend two thousand units of vitamin D, remember that it will take months sometimes to to create an impact on their immune, uh, immune function. Supplements, uh, re uh, supplements required for patients below 50. And interestingly, uh, this is important to mention that low magnesium levels might make vitamin D in, in, ineffective. And this is really interesting. Uh, this was an article published by the American Osteopathic Association. They reported that 50, up to 50% of the U.S. population is deficient in magnesium. Vitamin D cannot be metabolized without sufficient magnesium levels, meaning that vitamin D remains stored and inactive for as many as 50% of Americans. So remember that it's not a lot of patients out there have been educated and read about the importance of vitamin D. They are taking supplementing with vitamin D. However, if they don't have sufficient amount of magnesium, that that vitamin D might not be um, might not provide the the healthy impact that those patients are looking for.